Guys, hi! Welcome to Mystic Death. I'm Bobby, the lead 3D artist of Mystic Studios, working on Alan Sharp. I've also worked on Wipe Toilet Plague, a multiplayer game, and a lot of other smaller, low poly games for clients uh, over the internet, doing as a work as a freelancer. Uh, besides game deve development, I've also worked as a digital marketing manager for UX Labs and uh, realizing that in order to get your game out into the market, you need to know some marketing. I decided to take that route and learn that too. So here on, in this uh, devlog, I would like to talk to you about 10 game design mistakes that could ruin your game and how you can avoid them. Without further ado, let's get into it. Mistake number one, not starting with a prototype. Prototype is the smallest playable version you could imagine. So it's basically like the core mechanics of the game. You need to always start with a prototype. You don't need anything fancy because a lot of beginner indie game developers like have this awesome idea and they want to dive right in, uh, start the art, start the programming, continue on with the development of the story, the characters, so on. That's a mistake. You need to start with the basics. So that, that's going to be the gameplay mechanics. First of all, when you start making your game, you need to go with a prototype which will be playable with the most basic uh, figures like uh, squares or if you're doing 3D like uh, cubes, cylinders and so on so on. You don't need the art at the beginning. You need to find the right uh, gameplay loop, so the, the basic gameplay mechanic which you think will be playable replayable for your target audience and after you find that particular uh, gameplay core mechanic then you can proceed further on into developing the game mistake number two making a game for no one and building a game for everyone someone once said if you're trying to please everyone you'll end up pleasing no one so that's the most beautiful thing in the world every single person in the world is unique and when you start working on your game, you need to take into consideration those people that you think your game is intended for. That's what marketers call your target audience. You will eventually notice in the beginning when you present your game to your friends, to your family, to various people, some of those people will say, um, perhaps it's good to add FPS elements, first person shooter elements into your game. It could be great and you know you're, you want your game to be a walking simulator so not an FPS then another one will say I would like to have fast travel but the thing is you cannot please everyone in order to find your target audience you need to think like your consumers you need to ask yourself who these people are where are they hanging out what are their needs what are their fr frustrations what systems in games do they like? What kind of games do they like? You need to know as much as possible in order to create the perfect product for this target audience. Mistake number three is being too secretive or avoiding feedback. I don't understand a lot of game developers. Uh, when they're developing their game, they're trying to hide it. They're not willing to show or speak about their product much until it basically releases. I don't quite understand that. I managed to ask a few guys, why, why are you doing this? And they said, I'm too shy to go in front of people. Uh, there was another answer, our game is so unique uh, that we don't want others to steal our idea. And the third one was, I want it to be perfect when, it, when it's released. Uh, you see, I'm gonna speak from a marketing perspective now. There are a lot of game developers in the world today and millions and millions of indie games coming out every day. So please don't put that unique label on your product. Secondly, there isn't a magic wand anywhere in the world where you can just swish and make people see your game. Marketing doesn't work like that. But you will say, but however, tri AAA companies do it, right? Yes, they do it, but do you have the millions of dollars budget 
for marketing or the expert marketing team to market your game before it releases? If you do, feel free to do so. However, if you don't, uh, please listen to what I have to say. You need to start marketing basically from day one. Here are a few things that you must not avoid in order to make your game stand out in the crowd. Like I said, you need to start from day one. The second thing that many game developers hate is social media. Yes, you need social media. You need a lot, a lot, a lot of interaction on social media. Talking from my mar digital marketing experience, one thing I could tell you guys is that you need to stay active, to be consistent on all of your social media channels. Post on Facebook, post on Instagram, post on Twitter, find your right audience. However, be mindful. Social medias are what the name implies. They are for socializing. Do not go and like uh, constantly uh, do promotions and sales of your game. You need to become closer with the people. So for example, you have like a you're like a member in a Facebook group. You see a question, like a problem that some developer has and you know the answer, help him. So that's the first thing. You need to establish connections via the social medias. And after that, like I said, if you start from day one, you have a new concept, new concept art, then just post uh, an image about it. Mistake number four, focus too much on story and realism over gameplay. Should you focus too much on the story of your game? Okay, so this topic is a bit controversial, so bear with me, guys. First of all, you are a game developer. And what does that mean? That means you're developing games. So the main focus when you start your game is not the story, it's the gameplay. So you need to uh, develop like I said in the beginning, the basic prototype, the core mechanics, which will be fun, engaging, keep your customers coming back, and after that you can develop the story. Also, the second thing I would like to talk about is realism over gameplay. So, there's one thing called escapism, which is basically a mental diversion from unpleasant or boring aspects of daily life through activities or imagination. Well, People love playing games. They love immersing into awesome imaginative worlds and run away from their daily problems for a moment. And, and the realism, the real life, it's, it's not that fun. So you need to always focus, like I said, on the core mechanics of the game and do not let them be sacrificed due to the game being too real. Mistake number five, inconsistent game art and design. So when you start making your game, you're so excited, you start drawing and texturing your models, uh, your NPCs, this one's gonna be awesome, and I'm gonna um, paint the environment, create like an awesome image, you go on painting and painting and texturing and creating all the environment with different colors, you think they're awesome, until you reach the point when you realize what you see in front of you is a total mess. Why is that? Because you need to have consistency. Uh, if there's one level with bright, like, uh, saturated colors, and you have a second level which is utterly dark, that's very wrong approach. You need to have consistency across the entire game. Mistake number six, recruiting uninterested friends. <laughs> okay, so I'm very familiar with this mistake. So when you start your game, you're so excited, you find your friends, you discuss, come on, let's make an awesome video game, let's do this, let's do that, let's create like a medieval, uh, I don't know, like realistic Skyrim game or some sci-fi genre game, and you start working, and soon you realize that not everything is going as it should. You see, some, some of the people you've recruited are not doing their job, they're not interested as you are, and the truth is no one shares the passion as you. The same thing goes for business. You need to have the right partners in order to reach your goals, in order to succeed. And there's a great saying that I read somewhere, it said, if you feel caged where you are, then you're not in the right place. Keep in mind, don't feel depressed 
because basically the internet is your gateway to the world. So there are like million Discord channels, forums and Facebook groups where you can find other fellow game developers who have the same passion as you and are willing to help you achieve your idea. Mistake number seven, wrongly evaluating feedback or criticism. There will be a moment in your game development process when you will meet people who will send you negative comments about your game. Usually, I've noticed a lot of uh, indie game developers who are beginners at the moment, like, feel disappointed, depressed. Uh, they kept on saying, uh, they hate my game, I'm not gonna continue working on it, and so on, so on. Do you... Should you continue working on your game? No, you shouldn't. Just joking, guys. Yeah, you should, definitely. Not everyone is your target audience, and also, you need to be very analytical. You need to analyze all those uh, comments that are sent to you. Not all of the negative comments are bad comments. They're not all hate speech. Some of them are basically criticism, which if analyzed properly, they can push a game much more than if people only say, oh, it's a great game. So basically, analyze every single negative comment and think about how their criticism could help you improve the game. Mistake number eight, not having a clear vision. Most beginner indie game developers come up with this awesome idea that this game they have in their mind that they want to create and they dive in lightning fast into creating the game and so on and so on. Uh, the thing is, as you progress throughout your development, you realize suddenly you're stuck and you have like a creative block, you don't know what to do. Then you become nervous, you become depressed, uh, you don't know how to continue. And why is that? Because you don't have a clear vision. Before you start your game, you need to have a game plan. What does that mean? You need to experiment, you need to research a lot. Do not start your game, your game development, before you do a complete research of your target audience, uh, or what they like, how could you create the game and particular stuff in order to never get stuck during your development. Mistake number nine, not identifying a critical path. Critical path is the series of events occurring during development and those particular moments which, if delayed, could delay your entire game. You always need to be ready about them and have like a plan if those happen, what you're going to do in order to uh, make your game continue its development. Let's take, for example, your 3D modeler suddenly gets sick or maybe he needs to go away for some time and then you realize your team is stuck. You don't have a 3D modeler. What are you going to do now? You need to think of those moments beforehand, before they happen, so you don't know how to react when they happen, if they happen, of course. Mistake number 10, not optimizing your Steam store page. This one is one of the most important things you should do before releasing your game. So the Steam store page is basically your digital storefront. It's your landing page where Interested parties will come to check your game, to be engaged with all the content that you provide, to buy your game. And that's why you need to have an awesome and perfectly optimized Steam store page. First thing, you need to have the right keywords implemented into your content. People tend to remember more and be engaged with more visual stuff rather than, I don't know, a lot and a lot of text. So you need to keep your text short, straight to the point, uh, introduce your customers really quickly to the world you're building and provide eye-catchy, engaging visuals. Remember, the Steam page is not the place to show off your skills, how good you are at modeling, game design or programming. Instead, it's the place where you show your customers what they will get if they play your game. So those were the 10 game design mistakes that I wanted to share with you guys. Hopefully they were very helpful. If you love the content, please like this video and subscribe in order for us to grow an awesome community.
Have a great day. Bye.